Facebook link is posted. Sorry, which link did you just post? Oh, I was going to change. There we go. Okay. All right, we're all right. We are now streaming live on Facebook. Oh, um, nice. So thank you for coming to the Eisenhower Library Comic Fest. And I hope you've been at panels all day. This is the last panel for the day. After this, we'll be doing a costume contest. My name is Penny. And um, just so you know, a couple of things. Make sure you go to Artist Alley. There's about 30 or 40 different artists there. And some of them have specials for the day. And you should all buy things from them. And also, if you happen to live in the Norwich Harwood Heights area, we have a comic book store called Atlas up on Harlem Avenue. And he is offering a 10% discount until the 13th along with two free comic book day comic books if you come in and mention comic books. So if you're around here, which I know a lot of these guys are, please take advantage of that. But today, now, we are going to be doing a cosplay panel. Afterwards, if you get a chance, we will be awarding the cosplay winners. So you might want to stay around for that and log into that and check it out. But I'm going to hand it over to Carissa, who is from POC uh, Cosplay. She is a recent college graduate with a BFA in musical theater and a focus on stage combat. She has been cosplaying for over eight years and pursuing a career sta a stage in career ah, a career in stage combat for two years. A lover of tea and all food with a passion for learning and education. And she is kind of going to take the helm on this one. So and all these other fabulous people are going to introduce themselves. So Carissa, go for it. Hi guys. Um, Hi. So. We've got about 45 minutes to talk about a lot, so I'm gonna try and uh, get through this as quickly as possible on the uh, business side of things. Um, we wanna give you all as much information as we possibly can. So we're gonna be quick. Um, first things first, during the stream, we will be raising money for Brave Space Alliance. They are local to Chicago. They are black owned and trans led, and they are food pantry center on the south side of Chicago. Um, they are currently the only LGBTQIA led food pantry in the Midwest. Um, they are currently in need of food donations for September and we will be raising money to send aid. Money donations can be sent to ko-fi.com slash K-T-W-O cosplay and information on food drop-off will be in the chat. So I'm going to copy and paste these links so that anybody who's in here can hopefully go on a little adventure. Um, and once again, thank you, Eisenhower, for having us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump into things, and hopefully I can get through things quickly. Um, but yeah, I am a cosplayer. I've been cosplaying for about eight years now. I started freshman year of high school, um, and I also have started pursuing becoming a literal knight, uh, meaning I have been training to <laughs> become a mounted combatant. Um, I was supposed to learn archery, horseback riding, and other stunt work over the summer, but unfortunately coronavirus took that away. Um, so I've been training with my broadsword in my apartment on my own. <laughs> so um, I am officially certified in broadsword, unarmed, and rapier and dagger. Um, most of my knowledge from communities come from cosplay work, and weirdly enough, cosplay and stage combat overlaps a lot. The only difference is that you know how to use a weapon and you know how to use it safely and you know how to make it look dangerous without being dangerous. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and you can find me on all socials at K2 underscore cosplay. Um, so being a cosplayer and the stage combatant comes with a lot of weird issues and I wanted to discuss how we deal with them and how to make it easier how to as a community come together and talk about these things because I think a lot of the times people are afraid to make mistakes and I think that people should have a little bit more grace when educating people on things they don't know because not everything everybody has the same level of education that we all do um, I do the things I do because I love to do it I love to be the representation that I have seen and to be able to give little girls the same representation that I have seen and to see little black girls around convention centers at Ren fairs being able to say oh my gosh can I do that is that something I can do and be able to say yes you can is amazing but I also know that there are things we should work on before we let other people into this community I think we should definitely work on some things 
Um, before I speak on the things I want to speak about, um, I will say that one of the main issues in this community is a bit of colorism. Um, I am very privileged to be light skinned. Um, I have a privilege in knowing that I will never have to face the racism and the obstacles that my dark skinned people have to go through. Um, I believe that I should use that privilege to at any point in time uplift those who are darker skinned than I am. Um, if I have the opportunity to bring them with me, I will bring them with me. If I have an opportunity to put them on a pedestal higher than me, I will put them on a pedestal higher than me. Um, and if I can't do that, I will at least have them walking side by side with me the entire way there because I want to bring people up with me instead of leaving people in my dust. That makes no sense to me. Um, if you're doing things, you should be bringing other people with you. Um, and I think it's our responsibility to absolutely continue to do that work, to continue to uplift other people. Um, that being said, there are some things that I faced in this community that I think um, aren't talked about a lot. I, I do believe that there has been some conversation about some of the topics, but not a lot. Um, and one of those things are little tiny microaggressions that I experience. And one of them is um, the whole, you should cosplay this character. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else in this group has gotten that. Um, it's also the whole, can you be insert person of color character in this group? Um, these are two things that have been said to me a lot. And I think genuinely people are trying to be nice. They're trying to be inclusive. They're trying to give you a compliment. I get Tessa Thompson cosplays a lot. Bless her. I love her. She's incredible. Um, but sometimes I'm just not interested in the character that she is playing. Um, and I think that people need to, before they ask a person of color to be in their group, they need to think if they're interested in the series that you're cosplaying from, are they interested in the character that you're asking them to be? And if you're asking them to be in the group, why not start with asking what character they would like to cosplay? Um, for example, I'm doing a Riverdale cosplay and some people were like, all right, so you're gonna be Josie. No, no, no. Uh, for those who don't know, Josie is one of the only black characters in Riverdale. I love Josie, but she's not my favorite character. My favorite character is Archie. I will not take criticism. <laughs> um, but I would want to cosplay Archie. And so I think you can learn a lot about a person by asking what character they would want to cosplay in your group and leave it up to them to figure out what person they would like to cosplay instead of shoehorning them into one character just because they might have a similar skin tone. That goes for also suggesting characters. I get Moana all the time and I, why? We're, we're, <laughs> we're similar in terms of skin color, sure. We both have curly hair, but I, that's, not, that's not me. <laughs> I don't do that stuff. Um, also, what if Tiana isn't my favorite princess and I'd like to cosplay Cinderella? Don't suggest that either. Um, you wouldn't go around and suggesting the same things to your other friends. And if you do, I would ask you to still consider what are their favorite things? Are they even interested in that series? And instead of trying to shoehorn them into a certain character, ask them what they would like to do. Um, that also feeds into the other topic I want to talk about, which is canonizing or calling another cosplayer canon. Um, this has been an issue that's been talked about recently in the cosplay community where certain cosplays are considered the canon version of a character. So for example, if someone dressed up as Steve Rogers, okay, so they're, they look like Chris Evans, they have the complete screen accurate costume, so then people will call them canon. Um, I think this brings a weird pressure onto other cosplayers to be perfect, to have screen accurate cosplays, to go above and beyond what they even want to do because they need they have the need to be better than that person and it creates some weird competition and competitive thing within the community and i think that instead of doing that if someone's cosplaying your favorite character you should uplift them no matter what doesn't matter if their costume is non-canon non-screen accurate they're still put a lot of time and effort and love into that costume piece and you should 
give them the same effort and love back. And just because someone looks like a character or looks more similar to a character doesn't mean they should get more love than another person who might not look exactly like the character. Um, I have had a lot of anxieties personally about cosplaying Yaskier from The Witcher. Um, thankfully, I've gotten over it. I have. <laughs> I love this character more than life. Um, it scares me a lot to cosplay him because I'm not, I'm not white. I'm not a dude. Um, and the costume's not going to be canon. But that doesn't mean that we're not putting an incredible amount of effort and art and love into this costume and into this character. And I'm very excited to cosplay this character. So I think that's what matters at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if you're trying to be canon or not. Have fun. Do things for you. Do things that bring you joy. And if people don't see you as canon, then you know what? That's on them. You put love and effort into this costume. You love this character. You get to wear it. You get to feel awesome. Go out and do that. And if people can't support you for that reason, then they don't need to be supporting you in the first place. You can find people who do. Um, so yeah, those are two issues that I've encountered a lot um, and have been trying to like overcome a bit. The cult canon thing is very, it's weighed on me a lot. It's also expensive to be screen accurate. Um, and people can't afford that. So those are two things that I've discussed and I know a lot of people have tried to figure out how to help because it seems like there's a sense of being helpless sometimes, especially in this digital age and a lot of people can't go out and protest um, just because, you know, COVID, COVID-19 is in existence um and it's exhausting to be able to be in the social media space and trying to defend yourself all the time so we do need allies uh, we do need people who will speak up and speaking up is the number one thing you can do right now both online and in physical spaces in physical spaces one of the things i've thought about was if you're in a group of people and a photographer wants just a photo of two of you or for some reason all of you except one don't let that happen. Um, absolutely do not let that happen. Say, you know what, we're in a group, you get all of us or none of us. And if for some reason that photographer can't take a picture of a person of color, they don't get to take a picture of you. Um, you know what, just say you need to learn to figure out how to do this. And until you do, you don't get to, you don't get to take a photo of me. Um, have a nice day. And just that tiny thing can bring a sense of togetherness, that you're not alone. Um, also, if you're online and you see somebody giving gross comments to a person of color, um, stand up, say something, go into the comments and say, hey, this isn't okay. Um, what you're doing isn't right. Um, because I've seen a lot of, I've gone through a lot of things online where people are just railing on me and saying the weirdest things and no one's helping. Um, and it's exhausting to be the only person to reply to those things. And I'll get text messages from friends, followers that are DMing me that'll say, oh, this is terrible that this is happening to you. Don't spend your time texting or DMing me. Spend your time in the comments defending me publicly. That is how you can be a better ally. Um, make sure, of course, that you're educated. And if you're not, then have an educational conversation with the person, but don't just leave that person out to dry. Um, also, just uplift other people. If you have a project, bring other people on. There's no reason why it should just be you and people who look like you. Um, I've been trying to do this a lot more often. I've been trying to organize a lot more things where there's people I don't know who I haven't worked with. Um, and that includes, that includes trans peeps, disabled peeps, darker skinned peeps, bring them all on. We talk about having a seat at the table and I think we need to reforge the table so that there's a new normal. Because the table has been dominated by one thing for so long, I think we need to rebuild the whole table. So we all need to start helping rebuild the table so that we can all have a seat there. And we can't just do that as one person. Um, and the last thing is no one is done learning. Uh, it's hard. It's, it's a lot of work. But even I have a lot of things to learn. I have privileges that I didn't even know about until this year. Um, but don't ever stop learning you're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess up. That's okay. If you say a racist thing, that doesn't make you a racist person. If you are educated on that subject as to why it's racist, why it's caused harm, why you've done something wrong, and you continue to do that thing, then you are a racist person. 
if someone has educated you on a subject and you continue to outwardly make the same mistake, you then become that mistake. Do not continue to make mistakes once you've been corrected on them. And if you do, continue to learn. No one is ever done learning. And I firmly believe that. I firmly believe everybody can continue to learn. Um, you're never done learning. Uh, I think everybody's also fully capable of educating themselves as well. So, yeah, that is all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I feel like you brought up a lot of really good points um, and one, a couple of the ones that I that stuck out to me were like pigeonholing um, cosplayers into like POC holes uh, and then the, the photographer one. Um, so, I mean, in the interest of like, starting a conversation between all four of us, like what are your guys' thoughts and, and how, can, how, how can you like speak to your um, individual like experiences? Um, did we wanna go around and introduce everybody real fast? Yeah, please, okay. uh, please introduce yourselves. Cool, cool. Um, so I am Violet, I uh, use they, them pronouns. I am Viva Violet Cosplay on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I am a half Mexican uh, trans non-binary, just gender screwed person. Uh, and I have taken on a lot um, in the last couple of months with uh, organizing local Orlando protests and then translating all of that into my social media and you know, becoming a big aggregator for a resource, um, especially for sending donations. So that's kind of my wheelhouse. Uh, what about you two, JP and James? Um, sorry, I was muted there for a second. Um, You're good. Oh, uh, I'm, hi, everybody. I'm KP. I go by KP11 Studios on pretty much most of the platforms you know. So I'm on Twitter, Twitch, uh, Instagram. My primary background is a cosplay photographer slash portrait photographer, but I've kind of branched out a little this year. Um, you can find me on Twitch. I do a lot of uh, cultural, my uh, cultural centric uh, shows that are related to my culture as an Indian and as a Hindu. Uh, I try to use my platform to help educate about my culture and about just in general, uh, just openness and being, uh, available to learn and use not just Western ide ideologies, but other cultures as influence to kind of help create new stories, but that are still respectful to your original source material. So that way we have a much more diverse and much more colorful space in anything that we do, be it board games, video games, movies, uh, etc. So yeah, that's where I'm at. And uh, oh yeah, I you go by uh, he, him pronouns. And I'm Gabe, he, him. Uh, you can find me as Gabe James Games on Twitch, to put it in much anywhere else. I am a cosplayer, voice actor, game designer. Um, I do a lot, but uh, one of the things I do now is I uh, created a group called Mythic Grove, uh, where essentially it was a place to house projects of my own, but then I've started using it to essentially like reach out to just diverse groups of people. Like there are plenty of black artists that haven't gotten much time of day for stuff that they do and they're insanely talented. And so what I've been doing is taking like the extra that I make and like once a month I'll find a artist of a marginalized group and then work with them on something. And sometimes you see it immediately and sometimes you don't because I have at least four projects that I'm working on in the background that I haven't announced yet. Yeah. We love the NDA. We love yeah. it. <laughs> I have oh, yeah. more NDAs than I do fingers. It's oh, stupid. I, I feel this. I feel this. Or just like, oh, yeah, I finished that. It was a lot of back end work. Yeah. And like you learned a lot, but yep. the vibe. Um, so KP, I, I mean, I think all of us kind of as cosplayers and as people who like make stuff online uh, can talk a little bit about like the photography and like if you are part of a group like being part of the floor in a way that makes everybody feel like they are there like if you're photographing a group making sure that everybody in the group actually gets photographed um and i i know that you kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit not to like totally put you on the spot um but i think we could all kind of bounce off of that but i mean that's that's your your wheelhouse um, yeah, I'd be, I'd be honored to. And I think first and foremost, I, I, 
as a photographer, it's a profession. <clears throat> and as a profession, you need to be professional about it, right? Uh, it, like, it starts, I believe, not on the con floor itself, but from as soon as your client approaches you. Uh, I hear all these terrible stories about photographers who are very elitist, who are very, you know, it's not just about skin color or anything. It's more of, you know, hey, if you don't fit that mold, like, like Chris had said, if you don't fit a certain mold on how I think that cosplay should be, I'm not going to photograph, you know, I'm not going to shoot you, be it because your skin color is different, your body shape is different, your level of expertise as a cosplayer might not be up, up to their snuff, which, you know, is all, all just bullcrap to me because as a professional, it's your job to learn how to approach that in a way that makes your client look the best that they can look. Because I truly and 100% believe that everybody has something to bring to the table, that everybody is uh, infinitely gorgeous <clears throat> and it's up to you to bring that unique trait out of them and display it in your in in your shot um and it really starts from when they first approach you right first things first never ever my philosophy is never ever ever deny a client um the only reason i would ever say no is because i just don't have any more slots available um, it's, you know, timing wise, scheduling wise, that's the only reason I would say, hey, I'm really sorry. Um, if it's beyond my skill set, I'll let them know. I'll be like, hey, um, the type of shots you want, maybe that's not within my wheelhouse. That, that's the style I might not be able to shoot, but I would love to try. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, this is also how you grow, you know, when you get challenged, when you get pushed beyond what your limits are. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging that you don't have the skill set to do that shoot. It, what's wrong is to just deny it outright and never bother to grow from it. Um, for example, a lot of people that there's that you know myth that people follow. Oh, I don't you know dark skins are harder to shoot, harder to light than lighter skins, which is utter bull crap. That just means you don't know. You didn't bother to learn it. It doesn't mean you, it can't be. I promise you that the, <laughs> photography has been a thing for you know decades upon decades we figured out how to shoot under every lighting condition under for every skin type every body shape there are tutorials there are expert you know magazines articles and with the power of the internet we can access all that information at the thing at our fingertips you know i everything i've learned I, I honestly don't consider myself, you know, an amazing photographer. There are, are um, infinitely more talented pe uh, people than me out there. Everything I've learned is me going, okay, that is a problem that I need a solution to, and I need to figure out how I can do that. Okay, now I need to go and learn this. And I would just YouTube it. I would look it up online. Um, and how I like to approach any project is I believe it's a very collaborative effort. So if a client comes to me, I sit down with them and like, okay, so what is your concept? What is it that you want out of this shoot? Um, do you have an idea of poses? Do you have ideas of backgrounds? Do you have, um, what is the feel? If it's a character from an anime or a TV show, I, they're like, give me some stills. Like, hey, it's fine to grab some screenshots from the show and show me like uh, what, what it is that you, you want. And using that, I kind of then build off of that. And then, you know, I feel that by doing so, that A, makes them feel involved in the shoot a lot more than just, hey, I hired a photographer and now he took a shot, he or she took a shot and that's it. No, I helped contribute to the feel of this. I helped contribute on how this turned out. Uh, definitely, uh, as far as group photography goes, it's fine if you want like individual shots, but make sure that everybody gets that individual shots. Everybody gets a turn at a pair shoot because you know maybe the characters those two are a pair and then you know okay if those two people got a pair shot make sure that this person also is involved somehow later on they also get a pair shot and everybody gets an individual shot so like no one ever feels left out about it um it's it literally it's a profession and therefore it has levels of skill sets and it's a matter of learning how to build upon your own skills and not making an excuse okay um so that's just my personal way out on how I feel uh, we can approach about it and that, you know, we can always be inclusive about it. Sorry if I kind of rambled at the end there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was great. That was, that was 
a lot of information that I didn't even realize coming from a photographer's point of view of all the things that you have to learn. And I think a lot of people don't even realize it is a profession. Um, so you have to work at it. You can't just do it. Like you do have to put effort into it. And photography without cosplay is, or cosplay without photography is not really, like you can't really, where, where, like your profession is very important and in order to do it correctly, you need to have this knowledge. You can't just blindly go into things. Um, that being said, talking about professions, Gabe, um, you have a lot of them going on on your side of things. <laughs> Would you like to talk about some of the things that you've been doing and some of the things that is going on sure. on your side of things? Uh, cosplay indirectly has led to me having work which is interesting um one of the first cosplays i did that like got huge was uh i did a cosplay from a game called dream daddy and there's a character named matt who uh is a black guy with dreadlocks and it wasn't a moment where someone was telling me that i needed to do it which i think is part of why i liked the cosplay i found the character myself and i'm like hey that that one i don't have to change much for like that that could just be me and I did the cosplay and started posting it everywhere. And then it like blew to proportions that I didn't expect. And I started on a momentum of like, okay, maybe I can do cosplay stuff. And I'd been doing cosplay stuff for years and years before that. I'd go into conventions dressed as like a Heartless from Kingdom Hearts. Um, I did the character Kaname Tosin from Bleach years and years ago. And it was really hard to still feel like I could do it because there, there's a difference between feeling like you can do something and feeling like you can do something right. And I didn't really feel like I was doing something right. Um, and there weren't very many characters that looked like me, which is something that I, I would always want. Like I, I wanted to be the, the characters uh, and I would watch Power Rangers and I'd be like, well, I guess I have to be the Black Ranger because he's the Black one. And like <laughs> now, now that I'm at least older and a little a bit more like self-aware and self-confident i don't i don't care what the characters look like i did uh carissa talked about it i did a Geralt actually recently and there's always people that have something to say because no matter how much good there is in the world they're still bad because without bad good technically wouldn't exist it would just be normal which would be great but we're far from it um i did my Geralt cosplay so i had silver hair and yellow eyes and a scar down my face and there's still a bunch of people that are like oh it's Heimdall and I'm like no you're saying I'm Heimdall because I'm black well I mean you look like Heimdall okay but then are you saying that the Geralt in the Netflix looks like Heimdall well no because he's not black and it frustrated me for a while, but then it got to a point where people were more frustrated for me because I realized no matter what these stupid people say, I know what character I am. And I did this for me. I cosplay for me. I don't cosplay for other people. I cosplay because I enjoy it and it makes me happy and I get a moment to be someone else, whoever I want to be. We live in a world where we consume books and games and movies of fantasy because we like those worlds. So if I'm going to create my own world in an outfit that I wear, then that's, that's what I'm going to do. It's, and I, I say all that to say, if you were ever wondering if cosplay is for you, the answer is yes. Getting to a point where you feel like it's for you is a different circumstance, but it is and always has been for you, no matter what the character you want to cosplay looks like. Because there's also the difference in just wanting to enjoy and appreciate a character versus being a caricature. And that's one of the issues that comes with trying to cosplay the character that you don't look like. And very oftentimes with Black characters that are made, being Black is tied into their identity, which is why there's a lot of, it's, it's a hard bridge to approach. And I have seen Asian cosplayers cosplay as Falcon, uh, and they rocked it. And it was because they weren't treating the black aspect of Falcon as like an aspect of the character. They were just appreciating the character and the costume that came with it, which is also why we get issues when um, there's colorism with someone needing to darken their skin for accuracy. And the reason that's a problem is because you're treating someone's skin color as a costume. 
you needed if if someone wanted to dress as Jasmine, she has an outfit. You do not have to match her skin color to treat her skin color as a costume. I have seen people cosplay black characters that being black was not part like like in Bleach, like Kaname Tosin is a black character in Bleach, and I have seen white cosplayers cosplay as Tosin, and some of them rocked it. They didn't have to darken their skin. I knew who they were. There's literally a blindfold across his eyes. He has a very specific orange colored sash. There is a specific number on his back. The skin color is not required to tell who the character is. You can wear a costume and you don't have to treat their skin as a costume. One of the characters I love the cosplay the most is Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow is very not black. <laughs> but I don't care. It's amazing. And I actually have dreadlocks, so it makes my life easier, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, it's, it's literally just something that now I'm comfortable enough to be whoever I want to be. And it's frustrating that it took me years and years to realize that I could. But now, whenever I go to like a convention, I wear like three, four costumes. Uh, the last one I went to, I did a matte costume. I did Claude from Fire Emblem. I uh, did Sora from Kingdom Hearts. And then I did Jack Sparrow. And it was amazing. And there is nothing like running around as Jack Sparrow at two in the morning in the Poconos. Absolutely nothing like it. I wouldn't recommend it for normal people uh, or weird people in general. I ended up in a lake. It's fine. But it was a lot of fun. And people knew who the character was. They didn't think, oh, it's Black Jack Sparrow. No, it's just Jack Sparrow. The, me being Black has nothing to do with it. And if you weren't aware, is not something that we can control. If we can appreciate each other for the skin we're in, and then the costumes we're in, they can be two different things, and we can respect both of them at the same time. And as I started to cosplay more, like it helped with getting more reach or introducing me to new people. And I didn't expect um, cosplaying the character from Dream Daddy to lead to me becoming friends with the voice actor for Damien, which led me uh, to talking to the Dream Daddy team a little bit for a charity thing. And it's literally just from something that I wanted to do for me that I was excited about and I was passionate about and when you're passionate, especially with costumes and characters, other people will see your passion. They'll be like, your costume is amazing. The detail work, fantastic. That sword, I'm blown away. Or just like retweeting it and sharing it and getting excited about it. Because we uplift each other anyways. And that's what makes a community rather than a clique. And we need, we need some more of that. Um, I have so many cosplays that I want to do and need to do. Uh, the next one that I'm focused on, though, is Static Shock. That's my biggest one. I have literally plans for, like, an electronic skateboard that I can uh, replace the top with a trash can lid. So it's like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be wicked. I'm very excited. He also makes an amazing Gilmore. I'll fight you. Oh, that's true. That is <laughs> no, true. No, I don't. They're lying. I don't know who that is. Yes. You, mm, mm. <laughs> don't hide from me. I yeah, <laughs> I think I think I found Gabe. I think I found you because of Claude. But um, then I I saw you as Gilmore, and uh, me and my friend Nora just like sat in the car one day, just like look at this, look at this Gilmore, <laughs> just like Stop. went through your whole thing. Stop. No, no. Find you. I also don't know how to do compliments, so then I just get real weird. That's amazing. hi. <laughs> Yeah, V, uh, you've recently started taking commissions and stuff for cosplays and have started using this as like a career path. Do you want to speak on some of that? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm doing my best. Uh, <laughs> to, to, I also can't take compliments um, I, or, or talk about stuff that I, I should because it makes um, it's my job now. But um, yeah, so I uh, try to make sure like we've, we've talked a little bit about like cosplay is for you like cosplay is for everybody um and i am a newbie photographer i make costumes um and i try uh in my in my costume making uh corner to throw accuracy just completely out the window um it's important to me to like 
make sure that people know especially for me like coming from a background in like historical sewing um which is incredibly painfully white and feminine um and and sticking my my face into that community and being like i nobody makes a nobody makes menswear and like i'm dressed up right now but usually i look incredibly queer like no matter what i'm doing like that's the thing about about being a person of color and and being a trans person is that like on site each one of us has a marker of a marginalized group like you can't step out of it you can't step away from it it's not something that we can hide with makeup or in a costume um but i wasn't sure about you know making those spaces for me um and i wasn't sure about making those spaces feel like they were accessible because um you have to have so much money to you know really start sewing and you have to you know have this this background of like understanding where to find resources and things like that um so in my work um i started you know saying oh I, I want to make myself a resource for people that are working on smaller budgets are working you know in weird body types or are dealing with dysphoria uh, and I want to be a resource to deal with those things and and just you know be really candid about my experience um, but that morphed into um, after you know digging into um, the protests in Kentucky I was in Kentucky the weekend that the protest for Brianna, Brianna Taylor started um, and like sitting in my my brown best friend's apartment holding her while her work slack blew up with reporters saying, hey, I'm in physical danger, like that changed my life um, and made me want to integrate being an activist and being a big voice into my business um, and, and into my social media as for me as a person. Like it's not, you know, for clout it's not you know something I'm going to post a black square and step away from it's something that I'm really passionate about because it literally affects me um, there's no way to be an activist and no way to integrate this stuff into your day-to-day -day life that isn't a little selfish there's no like you know end game for it it's just something that you do day in and day out and you know it's something that we can't take off as queer people as trans people as people of color um, so I you know, I'm trying to integrate that stuff into into my day-to-day um, -day work and my day-to-day -day life. And that means sewing for people that are plus size. That means sewing for people that are queer. Or that means sewing for people like men that are coming to terms with their sexuality and, and gender and women that are coming to terms with their sexuality and gender and um, being like somebody who bridges those two gaps as somebody who's just, you know, gender all around. Um, and I definitely have been pigeonholed in the past into being like, oh, you're going to be the the angry Latina in this, you know, the really like over sexualized, like angry Latina woman. That's going to be you. And I'm like, no, actually, I want to be the guy over there that has, you know, 30 seconds of screen time. Um, and, you know, I think it's been twofold. Like, on one hand, I feel a little like a lot of the POC that I interact with, like all of you have, have been kind of pigeonholed um, into doing a large share of the work. Like all of the POC around me I see are doing triple time trying to put in the work on this subject and put in the work on being inclusive and have been really shoved into the spotlight. Um, but in, in that, I would just wanna tell everybody in the chat, like, hey, it's, it's on you. Like, this is not self-improvement work. This is not work that you do to hit an end goal. Like I said, it's something that is for you. Like, cosplay is for everybody. Activism is for everybody. Including everybody is for everybody. And um, that's something that I'm really trying to hammer home. Um, and, you know, I saw a lot of people saying, oh, I lost, like, followers when I started posting about Black Lives Matter. And I lost followers when I st said trans rights. And I was like, okay, well, cool. But, like, does that mean that you were already a home base for some people that you didn't want on your page? Were you already a home base for white supremacy? Um, and that's something that, for me, like, has only only opened up opportunity um, and and has been both overwhelming because a lot of people want to see me like a light-skinned person and be like, oh, that, that person of color will hold my hand. I'm like, you know what, sure, but like, the work is for you.
unpacking why in your colorism you feel me to be a safe space but you don't feel that black people are a safe space that's colorism that you need to unpack um and i think that being a voice um for me is is just a part of everything that i am now so yeah that was a good little not to go off <laughs> um we do have a few questions in the chat um the first one was what are some of the cosplays that are high on your to-do list um does anybody have any burning cosplays <laughs> that are uh, I um, am working on Percy from Critical Role right now, uh, and I went on a whole th I'm very excited. I get back to him. Howl's almost done. I get back to him tomorrow. But um, yeah, I had a thread uh, on Twitter a little while ago about how I think that Percy is um, Latino royalty, so I'm just running with that idea. Just think, just think he should be. Nice. I, I, on the other hand, I'm a baby cosplayer. And so I'm just starting something simple uh, as far as I can try. Um, I know the only one I've ever done is Gilmore and that was me basically cos cos cosplaying that I used my wedding attire to make that uh, and just like, you know, layer on things. And that's, you know, honestly, that, that's, you know, if you have some fancy dress already and you want to use that, just use that and then add on things from Amazon on top and somehow people think it's really good. Uh, but, <laughs> Um, you know, on top of that, you know, I, I've been wanting to learn how to make cosplay. I have a show on Mondays on my Twitch that I call Cosplay Corner, where it's just me with my wife starting from scratch, learning how to do props and things like that, because we've never done it before. And it's, you know, it's a fun way to learn, I think. And also motivation because I have to show it in front of people. Uh, one thing I wanted to do really badly is from uh, Percy Jackson. I really want to do Poseidon. Um, so yeah <laughs> and it's such a simple cosplay i just need to work on how to make a trident um so that's what i'm going to be working on and that's what i'm actually going to probably start doing on the show itself is uh working together with my wife to make it an, uh, make the trident i already have the the nice hawaiian shirt and shorts so we're we're 90 percent there already so and then i already have the beard and the hair so there we go we're done nice nice, nice. um so that's where, and then I do want to do some variations of Gilmore that I have in my mind, but I haven't really revealed that yet, but I do have some ideas for that. So there you go. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've been working, well, I commissioned somebody to do Yaskir from The Witcher. Um, that is my, I've been wanting to do him for a while. So I love this part, I love him a lot. Um, and I've commissioned my friend Nevin to actually do it. And I've just got some fabric, fabric swatches and they're really pretty and I'm very excited to see how it's going to turn out. But yeah, that's top of my list. Raihan from Pokemon. Yes. That's mine. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm I'm ready for that one. I have a whole um, picture of the thing. Quick yes. question. This is not necessarily a quick question. Um there is one talking about how long it takes us to do cosplays, and then there's one about what are your favorite costumes that you've done? anywhere from like a week if it's a closet cosplay to like two three months on stuff that i'm really trying to put detail into um one of my top ones though it's it's matt because he literally is just a normal person wearing normal clothes like mm -hmm. i love that it's clothing literally in my wardrobe so i'm like that's so easy yeah my cosplays I'm can take anywhere from a month if i'm buying it off of amazon to a year or two because I was a college student so there was no time to work on things. Um, usually I try to do one new cosplay a year because um, that was all I could do. Uh, my favorite cosplay? Probably my Sith Lord Winter Soldier because I have a seven foot tall lightsaber and it's awesome. So. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, I'm in the same boat um, either like I just did Jonathan Sims from the Magnus Archives and that was just like I bought a sweater on Amazon it was ten dollars uh, and I set up a photo corner uh in my in my apartment and just kind of did that and it took like two days um or percy has been an endeavor for about three months um just on and off because i have commissions but um yeah just here and there uh working on him so it's a range uh my my favorite is molly mock 
um, just because he has the weirdest energy. Uh, he <laughs> is all body paint, and I'm apparently addicted to arguing with people online about, um, you know, painting your face and why fantasy colors are not the same as brown face. Um, <laughs> but yes, he's my he's my favorite. You want to take that very last question of the resources, and then I think we need to um, stop so we can do the cosplay awards. Sure. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Did we want to go around and just say really fast where we can be found as well? Um, yes, please yeah. do, because yes, I know people absolutely. are interested. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, resources to get started are all over the internet. Um, I think that if you went to each of our individual pages, you'd be able to see all of our resources. Um, I am violet underscore cosplay on Instagram and violet underscore cos on Twitter. Um, it's... And could you put it in the chat too, please, Vi? Yes, I can, for Thank sure. Thank you. Uh, if anybody else wants to say there where they can be found. Um, you can find me at K2 Cosplay on Twitter and Instagram. I have a Facebook page, but I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't post there as often. Um, on my Twitter, you can find all my resources um, right at the top. I have a pinned tweet. Um, and resources that I used to get started, I just went to my closet. I cosplayed Castiel from Supernatural, and I had my mom's suit that she wore to her graduation, and then I bought a trench coat from a thrift store for like 10 bucks, I believe. So yeah, you can start anywhere. Uh, you can find me at KP11 Studios, pretty much any place that I have uh, that you can possibly think of. So on Twitch, uh, I, I put it, I just put it up on, uh, on, the, on the site, but you can find me on Twitch, on Twitter, on Instagram. I also have a Kofi and Patreon that I just recently launched. Um, and yeah, I think how to get started, I think this all kind of also stems off of what I wanted to say for what Gabe had said earlier. Um, literally anybody can cosplay anything and you can use the most basic thing. If you tell me that as you wore a red shirt and your one character, all you did was wear a red t-shirt and say, I'm said character, you are, you are that character. That's all that, you know, it's what you tell me, right? It doesn't matter what you, you know, what people think you look like. If you tell me that you are, you're one particular character, that is what you are. Um, people have, you can have any variations, you can have any skill sets or levels, just enjoy being that character. Just get started on something, wear whatever you feel is representing that character. And if you say it is, it is. That's all that matters. So um, recommendation, just anything that feels like it might fit a character and then look for a bunch you can have like 10 ideas and if you can only do one that's good enough like i was saying stuff from your closet uh you can find me gave james games twitch twitter tiktok instagram pretty much anywhere else on the internet uh and if you have questions or you see a cosplay that i did and you were interested in how i did it just ask like i'm i'm a person you can talk to me <laughs> All right, well, I think uh, Chris is gonna cut us off in a minute. So thank you all so much. This has been really great. And as I said at the beginning, I am not a cosplayer and I learned so much. So thank you all very, very much for this. It's been really informative. And thank you for coming and supporting us. And I hope you guys come to the, uh, to the um, award ceremony for the cosplays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thanks. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> waiting for Chris.